Hey guys, Luna here. Welcome back to another Skyrim console mod video for PS4 and Xbox One. I didn't manage to upload any videos yesterday, unfortunately, but today I will have plenty of videos as we actually have, for a change, plenty of mods to look through. I will showcase at least one single mod as well later today. So I don't think we have to waste any time and we can just jump into our first mod. Summonable Follower Horses. This is not about a horse companion, it's actually a mod allowing you to summon a horse for your companion. So this mod will make it so any follower you have will ride the horses that you conjure with this mod. If you already have any other mods that alter similar things, then this mod will still work with it. Horsekeeper at Whiterun Stables has been added, and she sells some reins and a spell tomb called Summon Horse. Buy any of the spell tombs and horse reins that you want to. And there are 31 different kinds of reins for your followers, and there are 11 kinds of reins for your own player horse. You can also purchase the horse summons from the horse keeper at the Whiterun Stables. So the way this mod actually works is that you have one summon spell and you equip a different set of reins to summon a different type of horse. So that way you don't have 44 different horse summon spells in your inventory. There's also a test horse at the Whiterun Stables to see if the mod is actually working. So if you go on your horse and your follower also goes on the other horse, then the mod is working. If you go on the horse and your follower doesn't, then the mod isn't working. And you will have to try to rearrange this mod in your load order. So overall, a decent mod for your followers. Our next mod is called Ammo Limiter, and it's an interesting mod that tries to make your quiver and arrow be a bit more immersive and realistic. You will frequently enter a dungeon with glass or ebony arrows, or whatever your favourite arrow is. For me, I use glass as the coolest looking one. But by the time you get to the boss, you will be shooting Draugr arrows you acquired from the undead archer you killed. This adds a light element of resource management to archery that is not too intrusive or penalising. So you now get the following values. A value of 6, which is the number of arrows shown in a quiver in the game. 24, the typical number of arrows in a hunting quiver or 100 arrows, the number of arrows a Saxon archer was expected to carry. These are all available for you to use now and can be configured by crafting the ammo limiter item at the tanning rack. The changes also apply to crossbow bolts as well. So this will essentially just change the number of arrows that you can actually carry to 6, 24 or 100. Our next mod is another Dominion mod called More Dark Elves, a mod series that we've seen often. The mod, as you can guess, adds more Dark Elves into Skyrim's towns and cities. The Dark Elves can be used as followers and level up to 81. They're essential and they can be married as well. I don't want to name them all this time, but I will tell you where to find them. You get two in the Dark Brotherhood, two in Riften, three in Rorikstead, two in Solitude, four in Whiterun, two in Windhelm, four in Winterhold, and there are four dot around the wilderness. All of them, except for one, can be married. Next up we have a whole bunch of 4k and 2k retextures for Dongart items. This is actually two mods but they changed the same things. Just one is 4k so it's higher quality at the cost of double the file size. So this mod includes the Sun Hollowed and Blood Cursed Arrows HD retexture, Harkon Sword HD retexture, Aurel's Shield retexture, Aurel's Bow HD retexture, which is good for me as it's my main weapon, Gosu's Aurel's Quiver replacer, and Gosu's Aureal's Quiver Retexture. Overall, if you're looking for higher quality Aureal weapons, then check out this mod. They all look pretty amazing now, I have to admit. Our next mod is the Faram Armor from Dark Souls. The mod adds to Skyrim craftable heavy armor inspired from the Dark Souls series. And you can craft the armor at the forge under the steel category, provided you have the steel smithing perk of course, and a few common ingredients. The armor is all temperable, so upgradable with steel ingots. The armor rating is slightly higher than that of steel plate armor, and the armor comes with all the parts that you need, and also includes two helmets. The first one doesn't show your character's eyes, it's pitch black, while the second one shows a small part of your character's face and mouth, similar to just regular medieval helmets. Of course, all of these items can be enchanted as well. But overall guys, it's an awesome looking armor that you can equip on both male and female characters, and is definitely worth a download. Finaster, god of longevity, is worshipped by both Breton and Altmer, and is the source for the elves' long lifespan. Though nearly all Snow Elves runes have since faded into dust, the shrine of Finaster still hints at its former glory. Priests and adventurers fear its corrupted inhabitants, but perhaps a champion will arise to cleanse the holy place and receive the blessing of Finaster. So this mod adds a shrine that gives you a blessing to the game. The blessing lasts 8 hours and improves magic resistance by 10%. It is gained by activating the fountain that you can see in the video. There are also 2 snow elf chests and 8 falmers in the location as well. If you're looking for it, the location is actually added to your map. It is between Solitude and Markarth due west of Morthal, and if you can't find it, it actually overwrites the cliffside retreat area, which you can see before was nothing really exciting. 
The mod author also plans to make this location an actual Falmer dungeon for you to explore, so hopefully that gets added in the future to this mod. But overall, a nice little overhaul to this location. Our final mod is Capable Housecarls. Didn't you find it weird that the housecarls that serve you as Thane haven't been through proper training? This mod changes that and makes them skill better with level by giving them the perks they were lacking plus some quality of life enhancements. They will also level up with you to level 60 instead of 50 and they are now essential. The mod also includes fixes from the unofficial Skyrim patch including improved sandboxing in player homes. The perks that have been added to the housecarls I will list but they're all trained to use heavy armor now they have one-handed block, with the exception of Rhea and Vladimir, who use heavy armor with dual swords and light armor with one-handed slash magic, respectively. Those two have received the equivalent perks for their fighting styles. But all other housecarls have received some perks for the skills they don't use, to make them more capable of switching fighting styles if you want to. So here are a list of all the perks your housecarls will now use. For one-handed, they now use Armsman, Bladesman, Bonebreaker, Hack and Slash, Dual Flurry, Fighting Stance, Critical Charge, and Savage Strike. For two-handed, they now use Barbadian, Deep Wounds, Skull Crusher, Limb Splitter, Champion Stance, Heavy Armor, Juggernaut, Well Fitted, Tower of Strength, Fist of Steel, and Cushioned. For Light Armor, they now know Agile Defender and Custom Fit. For Block, they now know Shield Wall, Power Bash, Deadly Bash, Deflect Arrow, Elemental Protection, Block Runner. And for Sneak, they know Stealth, Muffled Movement, and Light Foot. And finally, for Miscellaneous, they know Overdraw, Magic Resistance, Snake Blood, and Extra Pockets. So if you're looking for a cool mod to overhaul all the house carls in game, then definitely check this one out. Well guys, there we have it, six brand new console mods for you to download and try if you like the sound of them or the look of them. That's of course the end of the video. If you enjoyed, like, comment and subscribe. I will be back later with another Skyrim mod video, hopefully more than one. So until then, stay awesome and I will see you all next time.